Welcome back to Tennis Talk, my name's Cam Williams, and with the new season fast approaching, only a couple of days away, we're going to go through the predictions for the top 10 for both the men and the women's rankings next year. So this time next year, we'll see how many we got right or uh, how many we got wrong. Let me know down in the comments below what your top 10 for this time next year is going to look like. We're going to start with the WTA though, which is probably the harder of the two because the WTA is so random. Let's go to who I put at number 10 in the world this time next year. So for the number 10 spot, I put Maria Sakari. Now she's currently number six in the world and she had a very impressive 2021, but I just feel like she's going to have a bit of a backslide in 2022 because she has a lot of points to defend. However, she does have points to gain at tournaments like Wimbledon, where she only made the second round this year, the Rome Open and Indian Wells. So she can make points up at some big events like those, but the points that she could lose are at the French Open, where she made the semi-final this year and the US Open, where she also made the same stage. And of course, the WTA Finals, where she made the semi-final there as well. So some big points there over the course of the year as well. So she's got to back up a lot of big results over a bunch of different tournaments throughout the year. So she needs to be very consistent. And I feel like it's going to be a little bit tough for her. So I think she's going to drop down to number 10. So Maria Sakri at number 10. Uh, look, I said she's going to have a bit of a backslide. She has a lot of big results to, uh, to kind of back up, I guess. So I think she's going to struggle this year. Uh, let's go look at who I put in number nine. And number nine might be a little bit of a surprise because you guys know that with these predictions, I like to put in a little bit of a wild card prediction. And I put Layla Fernandez at number nine. I feel like her upside and her potential is so, so big. And we, of course, saw that at the US Open this year. Uh, she has points to gain at places like the Australian Open, where, you know, she could replicate what she did at the US Open. We know that hard courts seem to be her best surface. Wimbledon also, where she lost in the first round, she could also make points there. And the Miami open. However, she does have points to lose at that US Open. She's got 1,300 points from making the final last year. Also, she won the Monterey Open in Mexico where she's got a 250 points to back up, and she also made the final of Acapulco. So, she's got some massive results, especially that US Open. That's really what's holding her ranking up at the moment, but I feel like she's got so much potential, and she showed that she could beat anybody on their day. So, Fernandez at number 9. Some of you might not like that one. Some of you might think yeah, she should be higher. Uh, she definitely showed a lot of potential, of course, at the US Open. I just feel like she's on the brink of something even more special in 2022. So she's my number nine pick. Let's go to the number eight. So coming in at number eight, I've put Barbara Krijakova, who is the current French Open champion. Uh, she's currently number five in the world, but I just feel like the last couple of months, she's dropped down the ranks. She went from number three to number five towards the end of the season. And I feel like she's going to drop down even further now. She has a lot of potential, though. She can make points at the Australian Open, where she only made the second round. Miami Open, and also the Madrid Open, where she lost in the early round. So she has a lot of points up for grabs in the first part of the season, but the French Open. That is where she could lose a lot of points. Of course, 2,000 points for winning the French Open. Also the Dubai Final, which she made at the start of the year this year, and also the US Open quarterfinals. So if she doesn't do well at the French Open this year, and which I feel like there's a lot of players that are really going to be competing for that French Open. It's a very random slam. If she doesn't make the quarterfinals or better, she's going to drop down the ranks anyway. So Krejcikova dropping down to number eight. Some of you might have kicked her out of the top 10 because of that French Open being so heavily reliant on that points. I think she's still good enough to make up her points at other tournaments like the Australian Open, the US Open, the Wimbledon tournament where she lost to Barty at Wimbledon. You know, she can definitely play on all surfaces. So we'll see what happens, but the French Open is going to be a big one. Let's go check out who I put at number seven. So number seven, again, might be a little bit of a surprise for most of you, but I put Muguruza at number seven. So she's dropped down the ranks uh, if we're talking about this time next year. She's ranked, ranked currently at number three in the world. She does have a lot of upside, though. She's got the French Open, which she only made the first round this year, Indian Wells, and also the Madrid Open, which she didn't play. So she's got a lot of points that she can make up in the second quarter of the season, but the big ones that she has to defend. Of course, the WTA Finals, where she won them this year. Also, the Australian Open Final last year. She has a lot of points that she has to defend from the Australian Open Final in 2020. That she, uh, she lost to Kennan in that final. So there's a lot of points there she could lose early in the season. And also the Dubai Open, which she won back in March. So there's a couple of big results there, especially that Australian Open for 2020. If she doesn't have a good Australian Open this year, she's going to drop down the ranks anyway. So it's going to be tough for Muguruza. So Muguruza, I put her at number seven, just because I just don't know if she can back up what she did at the WTA Finals this year. And of course, those Australian Open points from last year, it's very, it's very dicey because she's got to defend those points, uh, even though she only made the quarterfinals in this year's tournament. So that could be a bit of interesting there to see what she does with that Australian Open. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Let's go to number six. So at number six, I've put Iga Sviontek. So she actually made number four in the world this year, but she has a lot of upside. The Miami Open, the Cincinnati Open, and the Canada Open 
I feel like she could make a lot of points on that on the American hardcourt season. Now, she has played well on all surfaces. She's won Junior Wimbledon. She, of course, won the French Open. She's made the fourth round of every single slam so far in her career as well. So surface is not a problem. It's just location. So she has a lot of points she could make up in North America. Now, the points that she could lose, which is very dangerous here, is mainly during the clay court season. The Rome Open, she has 900 points to defend from this year's tournament, winning that. Uh, the French Open as well, the quarterfinals from this year. And of course, the WTA Finals. She made 500 points there. So she's going to have to qualify for the WTA Finals to save those points, of course. But I think she can do it. And I think she's going to go up the rankings this year. She could be higher. It was very hard to, not to put her up at number four or three because I feel like she could have a really good year in 2022. But I'll put her at number six and be a little bit more conservative. So Sviantec at number six. Some of you might have put her higher. This time last year, I didn't even put her in the top 10, and there was a lot of comments about why I didn't put her in. That was my bad. This time, I put her up a little bit higher, but you guys might think she should be number two or number three. I think number six. I'm going to stay, stay safe with that one. Uh, let's go to number five. So number five, I put a player that has a very good record, especially towards the end of the season, Annette Contivate. Now, the reason why I put her up so high at number five, I know she's currently number seven, but I put her up at number five because the majors, she didn't do well at the majors this year. She lost in the third round of the US Open and the French Open, so she has no points really to defend at those two tournaments, and she lost in the first round of Wimbledon. So I feel like if she does well at a slam, even if she just makes a quarterfinal, semifinal, which I think a lot of us think she could do next year, I feel like she's ranking her ranking is going to stay in the top 10 and maybe even go higher. But she has a lot of points to defend at the second half of the season. Of course, she got to the WTA final of the finals, uh, where she lost to Muguruza. She's got 955 points to defend there. She's also got points to defend at the Estrava Open and the Moscow Open, which she won back-to-back -back leading into the finals. So that last... October to November schedule for her is going to be very tough. So she's going to have to make up a lot of points at the start of the year so she can back up at the end of the year and maybe not have to rely on those points so much. So Annette Contivate at number five. Some of you probably would have put her higher. Maybe some of you put her lower, but I feel like this is about where she should be, especially because she's got such an upside at the slams. She makes a semi-final at a slam or two. She's going to be up at number three or number two. So she's got a lot of upside, especially at the first half of the season. And of course, like I said, at the slams. Uh, let's go have a look at who I put at number four in the ranks. So at number four in the ranks, again, might be a little bit of a surprise, but I put Paula Badosa at number four. I feel like she's got a massive upside, kind of like Contivate. They're both around the same ranking at the moment. And I feel like they could take the next step and go up the rankings even further in 2022. Uh, the Oz Open and the US Open, she only made the second round. So straight away there, we know hard court is a very good surface for her. She won Indian Wells, of course, last year, and she played well at the WTA Finals. The Oz Open and the US Open, a lot of points up for grabs. And the Rome Open, she didn't even play the Rome Open, and she is pretty good on clay as well. We've seen that. The slower surfaces seem to be her favorite. And of course, the points to lose. Indian Wells being the big one, she's got a thousand points to lose if she doesn't back that up. Now, Indian Wells will be in March, so it's going to be tough to see if she can back that up early in the season. Of course, the WTA Finals and making the semi-finals there, a lot of points up for grabs, a lot of points to defend there, and of course, the French Open quarterfinal as well, but I just see her upside, and I feel like the second half of the season, through Indian Wells and all the way to the WTA Finals, we just saw the best of Badossa, and we saw how good she could be and how much potential she has. So I think everything's starting to click for Badossa. So Badossa at four, and like I said, she's got a lot of upside, especially at those two majors, the Australian Open and the US Open. If she can get somehow get to the semifinals and maybe back up her Indian Wells performance, then she can probably play the clay court season with a little bit less pressure, I guess, because... Her ranking is very reliant on that one result. I think she's going to be fine, and I'll put her at number four. I actually got her winning the French Open. All right, let's go have a look at who I have at number three in the world this time next year. So the number three player, now this one might be a big shock. It's probably not as big a shock as Fernandez, but still, a lot of you might not agree with this one. I've got Naomi Osaka at number three. I think Naomi Osaka, if she plays a full season, she is definitely still one of the best players in the world. Uh, she's got lots of points up for grabs. She can win points at Indian Wells, which she didn't play this year. Wimbledon, that she didn't play this year. And the China Open, which was cancelled. Of course, we might not get it next year, but if we get it next year, it's a tournament she's done well at before. And the points to lose. The only problem is the start of the season is going to be very tough for Osaka. She's going to have to defend the Australian Open, uh, where she's got 2,000 points up for grabs. Uh, the Miami Open, where she made the quarterfinals as well. And the Melbourne Trophy, which is a tournament at the start of the year. So that sort of January to March period, she's got a very, she's got a lot of points up for grabs. And she needs to defend them as best she can. So Naomi Osaka, got her up at number three. A lot of you probably thinking, why is she up so high? Or maybe some of you are putting her at number one in the world this time next year. Like I said, 
Maybe Bardi has something to say about it, but I feel like Osaka is the best player on the planet when she plays her best and when she plays a full season. Let's go have a look at who I put at number two in the world for this time next year. So number two might be a little bit of a surprise. I put Ash Party at number two. Now, I made the mistake this time last year of saying that Party's going to drop down the ranking. She's not going to be able to back up her results. And she proved me wrong. And then some. She's well and truly the best player in the world right now. And she's got some points for up for grabs at some key tournaments. Didn't play Indian Wells, which she'll get uh, a chance to play in March. Also didn't play the WTA Finals. So if she does qualify in the WTA Finals next year, she could have a very good tournament there. She was the defending champion two years ago. And the China Open, a tournament that she's played well at before as well. So if we do get the China Open, then that could be a, a result that she could get. But the points that she has to lose, this is where it gets real tricky. Wimbledon, 2,000 points. She has to back that up. She's got to back up the Miami Open, which is happening in March, and the Cincinnati Open, which is happening before the US Open at the end of the season. So she's got a lot of points up for grabs to over a bunch of different tournaments throughout the whole year, and there's a lot of players seemingly wanting to uh, to dethrone Barty. So Ash Barty, she's currently number one in the world, but she, I think she's going to drop down to number two. I just feel like a lot of points to save, a lot of tournaments to defend. That might be a struggle for her, especially when we've got players like Osaka coming back. Players getting around her are getting better and better. Uh, Sabalenka being one of those. Let's go to the number one. Speaking of Sabalenka, let's go to the number one player in the world this time next year. So the number one player this time next year, I believe, is going to be Arena Sabalenka. Now, uh, Sabalenka, she could be number one in the world next year. She could be number 100 in the world. She is very, very uh, tricky to predict at times. Uh, she's got points to make up at the French Open the Rome Open, and also Indian Wells, where she didn't play this year because of, uh, she got COVID. So a lot of points up for grabs. Now, she can play on clay. French Open and the Rome Open, she could make a lot of points up there. And of course, Indian Wells. Now, she has points to lose in the Madrid Open, which is a clay court tournament. So she has played well on clay in the past. Uh, so the Madrid Open, Wimbledon semi-final, and the US Open semi-final. So those two semi-finals are a little bit tricky. You know, she's going to have to do well there. But if she can do well there, and if she can win a slam next year, which I believe she will... Uh, I think that she could definitely uh, make her way up to number one in the world. I feel like even if she doesn't make it at the end of next season, because I feel like next year we're going to have about three or four different world number ones throughout the season, Sabalenka being one of those, I feel like she's going to get top spot at some point. Hopefully it's at this time next year, so it kind of makes sense for these rankings, but Sabalenka at number one. So there you have it. That is my top 10 for the year. And look, like I said just before, that I think we're going to get a lot of different number ones next year. I feel like we're going to get three or four players get to the top spot. Barty is well and truly the best player in the world right now. But like I said, Osaka being healthy, playing for the whole season, I feel like that could be a difference. Uh, Sabalink is only getting better. You know, you've got wild card performance like Badosa. You know, she beat Barty throughout the year this year and also Contivate. I think it's going to be a very exciting WTA 2022 season. Let me know down in the comments below, who do you have in the top 10 for this time next year so we can predict them for you guys as well. And I want to know who gets any of them right because this is nearly impossible to do. We realized that this time last year when we picked all these players. The top 10 for the women, that is my prediction for next year. Uh, go check out the top 10 for the men. We've also done a video on that if you haven't already. 